Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very new launch. Um, a great partnership between Code Anywhere um, and Continue. And so today on this launch, we have uh, myself, Ivan, the co-founder of Daytona and Code Anywhere way back when, and also Ty Dunn from Continue. So welcome, Ty. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one. So I'll do like really quickly, um, and then I hand it off to you because you're going to show the most important stuff or the most interesting stuff this time. Um, so real quick, a reminder of everyone watching. So Daytona is an infrastructure tool for spinning up dev environments and Code Anywhere is a cloud-based IDE. And basically Code Anywhere now uses Daytona and so it has improved performance. They have a new browser-based IDE, pre-built environments, improved reliability. And you also have this cool little hash a slash hash thing where you can put app.codeanywhere.com slash hash and any GitHub URL. And it spins it, you get your browser ID, you get your dev environment, everything set up and running out of the box. But today we're going to talk something about a little more interesting. So AI coding agents is a thing and we feel it's really exciting to have that all packaged into one. So now you have, you know, your dev environment, your spin up, your previews, your coding and your AI coding agent all set up automatically. All you have to do is log in and get started. So we're partnering with continue to do this. So. Ty, tell us more about Continue and show us how it works. Yeah, thank you for inviting me to this exciting launch. Uh, Continue is the leading open source AI code assistant. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to have choice over kind of what models you use, what context you bring in. And when you get a suggestion from the system, you can actually go and understand why did you get that suggestion? And if you don't like it, you, there's things you can do about it. And so the really cool part about partnering with Code Anywhere and, uh, and Yvonne today is that um, they make it so easy to use Continue, right? To get started with Continue. Right before this this call, I fired up um, Code Anywhere, launched a workspace, and Continue was there working already. The models they they supply as part of the, the the workspace, and so you can just begin using it immediately. And so I'm super excited to to show show it to you today and um, have you try it after you you watch this video. Cool. Um, so. So I guess demo time, uh, tell people where they can get continue in general and show us like how it works. Yeah, definitely. So um, continue is an open source VS code extension, open source JetBrains extension. So if you go to continue.dev and you're using your local VS code or your local JetBrains, you can just go to those respective marketplaces, search continue and install it and then plug in your own API keys. Um, but today we're talking about an even easier approach, which is you can just go to codeanywhere.com you can create an account after you create an account or if you already have one, you just fire up that workspace and then continue will be there immediately. So that's all I've done. You're seeing my screen here now. Um, if I cut over myself to that screen, um, you can now see me and you can see a very basic Python project, right? Hello, remote world. Uh, I think this was the one that came with with Code Anywhere when I, when I chose Python as, as my starting environment. And what you'll see on the left-hand so uh, activity bar within this web browser version of, of um, of VS Code is the continue icon already installed. So you just click that and what that's, that's gonna show you is this initial chat sidebar. So what you're able to do is similar to if many of you have used ChatGPT or other AI code assistants, you can ask any question. Right now we're using GPT-4.0 um, uh, via the Code Anywhere API, but I can switch over to Claude Sonnet three and a half here and I can ask a question, right? Like um, what are the best sorting algorithms? And this is going to send a request to Anthropic's Claude three and a half Sonnet chat model. And while we're getting a response there, if I click this configuration icon, we can see kind of how how um, Code Anywhere has made this so simple, right? They've set it up so that you have access to GPT four O Claude Sonnet three and a half for the chat experience, and um, for the tab autocomplete experience, um, they're using Mistral's CodeStrel model. Right. And so what you're able to kind of see here is is the models that are available. Right. And if you want to go add your own custom commands or custom context providers, which we won't get into today. But um, as you start to use continue, um, you have the ability to go and, and add those and, and make this assistant custom to your environment. And so if I uh, close out of that, we can see that we got a response here. It gave me <laughs> sorting algorithms in an example in, in TypeScript. Right. Um, cool. Oh, and then it, then it provided me some some examples: quick sort, merge sort, heap sort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, like, let's do bubble sort. 
Uh, so like, give me a bubble sort example in Python. And I'm going to actually switch over to GPT-4.0. Let's try that this time. So if I kind of go into the chat here and I click this insert at cursor button, we're going to have this, this code just come over here. So now I've, I've got an initial kind of sorting implementation. Great. That's amazing. Right. Um, however, I, uh, I, I think bubble sort's not very efficient. So I'm gonna ask that question. So what I did is I, I highlighted the code, I pressed command L and I said like, how can I make this more efficient? And so using the context of, of this particular uh, highlighted code section, it's gonna give me an answer. For example, a bi-directional bubble sort. Okay, cool. And so what I can do here is then insert that at the cursor and I'm going to highlight this code and this time I'm going to press command I um, and it's going to give me the ability to just edit this code. So I'm going to say like make these variables more self-explanatory. So I'm going to be able to do a transformation of this code. So it's going to insert a suggested transformation here showing me kind of the different sections it's, it's deleted and added. Um, and if I go like this and I hit accept, that one looks good to me. I can accept this one. That looks good. This looks good. This looks good. This looks good. And so if I maybe like want to try to add another example here, right? And I can say array two. And what you'll see, right, is without even me having to type out an example, I was given a suggestion by Mr. Rawls code stroll model. So I can just hit tab, accept that. And then already it knows, okay, I'm going to probably try and want to follow the same pattern for this example. I do that. I click save. And kind of through this, you've seen the main three affordances for using continue within code anywhere. First, the chat experience, then the edit experience, and lastly, the autocomplete experience. So I'm super excited for, for y'all to try it out. And uh, you know what I mean, please join the continue discord, go on GitHub, give us a star and uh, give us feedback either in GitHub issues or in the discord help channel. We want to make it better for, for everybody who uses continue. So thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you, Ty. This has been great. So anyone uh, that's interested in this, obviously continue.dev, go to their website, open source. Um, you can create any issues. You can help them out, whatever. And if you want to try this out today, um, this experience is right here. Go to codeanywhere.com, log in, you can create a free account and start using continue instantaneously. So thank you all and super excited about this.